and uh, welcome to INQ and A. The Inquirer Question and Answer Program comes to you every Tuesday. Every week, we sit down with a uh, leading newsmaker to discuss the issues of the day. And tonight, we have a very special guest. Um, INQ and A is uh, heard on Radio Inquirer Nueve Noventa. Uh, it is. Uh, carried on the different social media platforms of the Inquirer group, including Viber, uh, on Twitter, uh, online, on Kakao, and on FireChat. And uh, it is on TV, on Inquirer 990 television. Last but certainly not least, it is also on Facebook Live. My name is John Neri. I'm Editor-in-Chief of Inquirer.net. And with me is my co-host, uh, Christine Sabilio, the uh, Chief of Reporters of Inquire.net. Good evening, John, and good evening to everyone watching tonight on radio and TV as well as Facebook. Um, as you all know, before we start our interview, we always give three things that we would like for you to learn about our guests. And for tonight, we'll share with you three numbers. So, 27942. To just tuning in, to those who, ju who are just tuning in, hindi po ito pantaya sa lotto. The lotto draw is after our show. Um, so, nine, because our guest was 27 years old when he became congressman. Nine. Uh, 27, sorry. Let's start with 20, 27. He was 27 years old when he became congressman. Nine, because um, he was mayor of Valenzuela for nine years. And 42, well, I apologize because <laughs> your staff oh, said this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> You are 42 years old right now and still looking for a wife. So to those <laughs> interested, you can call our hotline. No, I'm just joking. Um, so Senator Win Gachalian, yes, thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you, John and uh, Christine for inviting me uh, tonight. And uh, I'm very happy and excited to be here. Um, nasabi mo na yung pinaka important, which is my age. No? <laughs> but, yes. uh, but thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator, uh, thank you for making time for us. Uh, definitely. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Let's start with the, the hot issues. Uh, today, the Supreme Court uh, came out with a decision mm -hmm. on the Marcus uh, burial. Right, right, uh, right. What is your take on this? Well, uh, it's, it's a very interesting decision no? and very decisive, 9-5. No? Mm -hmm. nine, 9-5, five. Nine, five, yes. And um, I, earlier, just to update everyone earlier, the Senate voted to defer um, discussion on the Marcus burial mm -hmm. pending... Uh, the finality and the actual decision mm -hmm. uh, from the Supreme Court. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we want to take a look at the decision. We want to study the decision. We want to look at all angles. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, um, uh, with 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 nine concurring um, mm -hmm. uh, magistrates, uh, you will see different uh, angles and different uh, ideas in those. Um, yes, I understand. There decisions. are several separate opinions. So. And several separate opinions mm -hmm. also. No, so. Definitely, um, for a layman, no? um, there will be a lot of new uh, details that uh, should be discussed and studied, and uh, especially me, no, because a lot of the, uh, I'll be, I'll be honest, a lot of the uh, things that about the Marcus burial are mm -hmm. from uh, the newspapers and from mm -hmm. the uh, uh, from the uh, media outlets that mm -hmm. I read. But uh, since this is a very in-depth legal discussion, mm -hmm. uh, it will be very interesting for me to look at this and analyze uh, uh, how the magistrates came up to with this decision. I, I know you just said that uh, you agreed among yourselves not to talk about this. Uh, for now, for yeah, now. For now well, yes. I have to clarify. But can, can, yeah, that, but can I ask you, um, uh, Senator, so as, as, um, as far as the decision is concerned, mm -hmm. um, what would be the, um, shall we say, the best case scenario mm -hmm. uh, arising out of the decision? Well, um, I think uh, the Supreme Court clarified mm -hmm. a lot of the legal issues. Mm -hmm. no? And uh, this is, again, no, this is from what I just read and, and heard over the radio, no? mm -hmm. that uh, the Supreme Court clarified a lot of the legal issues. But I'm not very sure if the Supreme Court also talked about the moral issues as mm -hmm. well as the emotional issues attached mm -hmm. to this mm -hmm. Marcos burial. And mm -hmm. that, that's, a, that's a different dimension. Eh. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, earlier it was very prudent. Tama yung ako, no, personally. I, 
uh, voted to defer the mm -hmm. discussion for now no i'm not saying forever yes, but yeah. for now mm -hmm. so we can really look at the arguments no and see the different dimensions uh brought about by the magistrates mm -hmm. i think this is very important to come up with an educated and very accurate um uh decision no? and uh, it's very important also to look at the emotional and the uh, moral side, if ever they discuss this, you know, because again, no, um, a lot of these issues are, a lot of this are, are are from extensive discussions of the Supreme Court. That's right. So, Senator, you, you yourself, you're still waiting for the copy of the. Yes, yes. In fact, the whole afternoon I was monitoring. No, I was texting. Our Have you released your personal take on this issue even before the SC? I think my, my, my personal take before, no, since this is a very divisive issue, I've, I've talked to both the, uh, the pro-Marcos mm -hmm. and both the anti-Marcos. And my, or, my original take, no, um, especially when this became a very political topic during the election, was to have a referendum. Let the mm, people decide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the surveys, no, the surveys mm -hmm. are very split. 30-30-30. Eh? Mm -hmm. no? 30 against, 34, 30 undecided. undecided. And um, it's very, very emotional as well as division, divisive mm -hmm. issue. So my original position was to let the people decide. No? And in fact, uh, a lot of... Um, uh, political experts were also saying mm -hmm. the same thing, but again, no. Since the Supreme Court extensively discussed this, mm -hmm. I, I'm very, very sure there are a lot of new dimension, new angles that needs to be looked at, and even new information for this matter. So, um, I want to get a, a copy and, and and study it right away. Uh, in terms of the worst case scenario, naman, that will happen from this, uh, would it be? Sharpening that divisiveness, that sense of. Uh, I, I I think um, whatever it is, no. Um, I I think uh, we have to have some form of uh, closure mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in in in, mm -hmm. in in this issue, and um, um, that's why it was brought to the Supreme Court to really come up with some form of closure, no. Mm -hmm. As to whether you agree with that closure or mm -hmm. you don't agree is another. Is another issue, you know? but um, I think uh, everyone wants to already uh, have some form of, of conclusion in this in this yeah. issue, and mm -hmm. um, that's why again, no, I would encourage everyone no, to look at the decision, to study it, and for those who are following this issue, to look at the new details that came about no, during this discussion. I heard uh, Ted say earlier that uh, perhaps the opinions will be out by the end of the week yes yes so uh, it's, it's very ah. extensive Sabi mo nga, every mm. magistrate mm. Uh, mm. all of them had their own separate mm. uh, opinion so uh, it will be very interesting um, especially for us no, who, mm. who are following this uh, issue um, to, to study this um, decision maybe one more question um, yeah I, I keep asking but I keep forgetting what I <laughs> it's at, the, at the tip of my tongue no, it, it, it has to do with uh, uh, there are some proposals uh, abroad uh, saying that, I mean, there are proposals out saying that maybe the thing to do is to change the name. A compromise. Of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, without, you know, uh, asking you to commit to, to that particular. But what do you think of that kind of I, I think, in, 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 you know, from, from, mm -hmm. you know, from afar, you know, looking at the entire uh, context of this issue, um, I think the parang nangyari parang the burial actually in that place represents uh, condoning no? mm -hmm. what has happened in mm -hmm. the past. No? Parang it became okay if you if Marcos gets buried there mm -hmm. in uh, Libinga ng mga bayani, big sabihin that the people are already condoning mm -hmm. what has happened in the past, and mm -hmm. I think that is the emotional flair in That's this right. issue. Uh, I don't think it's the name, but it's really the act of of bringing him there and mm -hmm. burying him there. So that that became a, a very emotional issue. Um, that's why, again, no, I, I um, from from people who are not so legalistic and mm -hmm. not no looking at uh, a lot of the details, it's really uh, very good to look at this and how the Supreme Court uh, argued. Because I I'm not very sure if 
they talked about the, um, the emotional aspect of the entire issue. I'm not mm -hmm. very sure also if they talked about these type of dimensions in this issue. That's why, uh, again, no, um, I, I think it's more prudent for for all of us to just look at the decision and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and learn from it. What about um, security issues? For example, some of the groups protesting against it are saying, that, well, if it pushes through, uh, the grave would be defaced and, you know, um, well, would again, it be a problem for the government again, to... Wha wha whatever the, the next decision will be, no? um, the next action will be. Because uh, what I understand, again, mm -hmm. no, they're very shallow. I, I just uh, saw from the internet that uh, ultimately the president will decide no, whether mm -hmm. uh, Marcos will be buried in uh, uh, Libingan ng mga bayani, no, ultimately. And uh, I think there should be some closure and conclusion in this. And we just have to respect whatever that will be. No? Because I think uh, I would honestly believe that the SE, the Supreme Court acted mm -hmm. on the best interests of the country. Mm -hmm. And I think the President will also act on the best interests of the country. And um, I think uh, for most of us, no, probably the majority uh, just wants to have some form of closure no? um, and, 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 and uh, find conclusion. Um, Senator, let's leave this topic for now, but I'd just like to acknowledge, uh, well, this is something that we really wanted to ask you from mm -hmm. the start, uh, that uh, um, reader Earn C uh, posted this exact question on Viber. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out your mm -hmm. your uh, take on this. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to, well, something almost as controversial, mm -hmm. um, the uh, killing of uh, Albert Mayor mm -hmm. Espinosa. Um, this is actually... Uh, I mean, uh, the senator herself have reacted very mm -hmm. uh, viscerally yes. to this, no? And the SE uh, ordered an investigation as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Uh, well, definitely, I, I uh, um, a lot of our colleagues also uh, move, no, to uh, investigate this matter, and I support that. I think this is really a tarnish on the image of uh, the PNP, mm -hmm. and definitely, definitely, there's foul play in this. No? Um, I will not accept uh, that this is standard operating procedure because there's so many question marks eh, and there's so many inconsistencies mm -hmm. once again. No? Um, uh, again, I don't want to go into a lot of the details, but definitely I would support another investigation mm -hmm. um, and definitely focused on um, the meat of this issue, which is ano ba talaga yung alam niya? Mm -hmm. and uh, what yeah. led to this killing because definitely uh, he is in the uh, center no, of this drug trade, at mm -hmm. least in Region 8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he knows information that will uncover a lot of this uh, uh, drug trade in Region 8, or maybe in the Philippines also. And um, I really want to look at this angle also. Um, a lot of the senators support. We cross mm -hmm. party lines, majority, minority mm -hmm. in this issue, because we really believe that uh, uh, the killing was intentional mm -hmm. and um, it was meant to... Um, uh, silence, silence, or yeah. cover a lot of the uh, dr illicit drug uh, trade in our country. Senator, right now, uh, I think there are at least two main options that the Senate is looking at uh, to resume uh, the uh, Justice Committee yes, hearings yes. or to uh, start a new one uh, altogether. W w um, I think uh, it's just a matter of technicality, John. No? Mm -hmm. But I think definitely the focus will be. On, on this one, mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, on Mayor Espinosa, mm -hmm. and I think uh, um, I, I you know, once once the hearing starts, we cannot control where it goes. Mm -hmm. eh. um, baka it, we might be talking about other uh, controversial uh, EJ case, no? mm -hmm. and um, um, that's why I think primarily the focus will be on Mayor Espinosa and mm -hmm. what he knows about the uh, drug trade in Region Eight. The uh, pledge of uh, PNP Chief Bato uh, de la Rosa to personally protect uh, the mayor's son, mm. Kerwin. Um, what, what well, John, I think uh, uh, from the latest count that mm -hmm. I've seen, no, there are about, uh, if, I'm, if my numbers are correct, no, because it's moving, eh, mm -hmm. there are about 1,700 un uh, explained killings, no, mm -hmm. uh, perpetuated by vigilantes, mm -hmm. by uh, deaths under investigation. Deaths mm -hmm. under investigation. They, they say, yeah. This should be investigated, mm -hmm. and this should be investigated fast. No? Um, um, the PNP 
uh, Chief PNP committed to mm-hmm. investigate and to find uh, leads with this uh, with this uh, vigilante killings. Mm-hmm. But uh, hindi pwedeng tumatagal eh. No? Because uh, again, no, um, in the name of um, uh, in the name of justice and mm-hmm. in the name of uh, uh, fair play, he has to put a lot of effort in, in putting this uh, conclu- to, 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 to putting this to rest. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, di- again, no, this 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 killing of Mayor Spinoza is another tarnish. Hindi pa nga iba. We have now another uh, EJK, and um, that's why. Um, accountability is very important, and uh, it's very important to also um, punish no, whoever uh, perpetrated this. What do you think should the focus of the hearing be? Because I know in the past you've said that mm. the when Matobato me- testified, it it wasn't supposed to be part of that. And um, what do you think? Because the s- other senators we've interviewed had. Um, different ideas mm-hmm. of what the focus and that's why some of them questioned the motive of Senator De Lima yes, or the yes, objective yes, yes. of the I of agree. the hearing. Right, right. For you, what the do you original, think should be the focus? The, with that hearing, the original was EJK, mm-hmm. extrajudicial killings, but it went to the Davao Death Squad, mm-hmm. which is not really the the uh, focus of the original um, uh, hearing. That's why um, Senator Gordon was voted to take over mm-hmm. you know, that, that uh, committee and that uh, hearing but in this case uh, the focus should be on the killings on uh, uh, killings of uh, mayor espinosa mm. and i think uh, we cannot really uh, erase the fact that it will go through go to the other uh, drug trade in mm. region 8 no because mm. i think based on the list that he gave no a lot of it are about the drug trade in uh, in Region Eight, and mm-hmm. I think that's also the crux of the issue. No, and um, it's good to really find out um, deeply uh, who are the personalities involved and how big is this drug trade, and who are um, I, I'm sure no, um, uh, this drug drug trade is going around in Region Eight as we speak. No, so is it still operational, and and and, and how can we? Uh, stop this in in, 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 in Region 8. Um, Senator, I, I, uh, I will have a question for you uh, uh, drawing lessons from your experience as uh, city mayor but uh, what's happening to our teleprompter? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, let's just say hi to uh, people watching us from uh, Singapore, Riyadh Singapore, Riyadh uh, Japan, Israel, Japan Valenz- Israel, well, of course, Valenzuela and Batangas. <laughs> the Republic of Valenzuela yeah. and uh, Batangas. Uh, can you say hi to them? Ah, well, uh, hi to our friends, OFWs, no? in yes. Singapore, yes. Riyadh, Japan, Israel, my kababayan in Valenzuela mm-hmm. and uh, Batangas. Senator, Good evening. Yeah, thank you. Senator, so you were mayor for nine years, also uh, congressman for, for six years. For six years. Yes. Um, you must have worked very closely with the local police. Mm-hmm. No? Yes, what is, what is your view of the... I mean, so now the police, you know, th- now they have this sort of gray... You know, so now they're, they're in the forefront of the fight and the war on drugs. Okay. And yet, they, in, uh, on some, uh, in some cases, they are implicated uh, in, in, the, in the killings. Your experience with working with them? Actually, uh, hopefully, no, hopefully this administration really put no an iron fist to mm-hmm. uh rogue policemen and 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 policemen who are scalawags mm-hmm. um scalawags are not new nothing new to all of us no i think uh, it came out in uh, almost every time there mm-hmm. there are news about scalawags and about uh, rogue policemen and i remember when i was a mayor um we also have the same cases no uh, we will have cases about uh, cotton cops. We have mm-hmm. cases mm-hmm. about um, cops who are uh, in the illicit drug trade. Cops mm-hmm. who are even part of um, the underground um, uh, syndicates. Mm-hmm. No? But what I am really optimistic about, and hopefully, no, um, uh, this will really happen, is to is for the new administration, the new leadership to punish and to remove all of these um, uh, rogue cops, all mm-hmm. of these um, scalawags. Um, one of the things that I'm, uh, I can see on the ground is 
optimism from our kababayans, no, from our constituents that hopefully the iron fist of the president is not limited to drug lords mm -hmm. and drug pushers, mm -hmm. but also to scalawags. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the scalawags are part of the system. Eh? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yun ang gusto natin makita. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, we want accountability in our police force also. Um, General Bato, I, I can I can see his his intentions, and mm -hmm. uh, many times it would be very hard on, on the police. But we also want action. No? We also want to see uh, policemen being uh, punished. No, because mm -hmm. if we will leave this as it is right now, um, the culture of impunity within the policemen mm -hmm. uh, will grow, and that is the scary part. No? Our own policemen, who are supposed to protect us, who are supposed to take care of our children, will now be the ones committing the crime and be the ones part of the uh, criminal effort. Senator, you joined the president uh, in his uh, yes. state visit to China. Mm. Maybe we can talk about that also. Yes. So first of all, what how was it like? Well, um, I, I went there to observe. No, mm -hmm. um, in, in, in For many, many years, um, China and the Philippines uh, had um, the relationship was cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is because of the West Philippines mm -hmm. issue, the maritime issue. But this is after a very long time. No? Um, uh, uh, high, uh, the highest um, official of the land mm -hmm. visited China. And China, in return, uh, the top four mm -hmm. um, official met with the president mm -hmm. and his delegation. Mm -hmm. um, it was warm. It was open. Of mm -hmm. course, this is the first time. No? So mm -hmm. don't expect um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of things to happen. No? But this really paved the way for uh, the rekindling of relationship mm -hmm. paved the way for possible investments on both sides mm -hmm. and of course um, I think the president was very clear that he wants to tap the uh, infrastructure power mm -hmm. you know, of, of, of China and uh, definitely this is the first step um, it's really now up to the um, the secretaries to follow up and to mm -hmm. make sure that this rekindling of relationship will translate into economic uh, growth and investments in our country. Is it fair to speak of a pivot to China? Um, I think um, when I was there, no, mm -hmm. it, it was very evident that uh, both parties agreed not to talk about the West Philippine mm -hmm. Sea, at mm -hmm. least for now. Mm -hmm. no? It was very evident. And I think that set the tone for uh, mutual cooperation in trade and investment. Um, the pivot to China, well, we can pivot everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can pivot anywhere. No? Mm -hmm. As long as um, that pivot will serve the Filipino interest. And um, um, that's why I think the administration was very careful no? in, 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 in communicating with their Chinese counterparts that we're here to do business. No, let's put the maritime issue for now no? mm -hmm. uh, on the side and talk about business because both of us can actually gain from this from this uh, mutual interest. Do you think it would be a good idea to um, veer away from the U.S. and pivot to China? No, or I, I, I totally disagree. Yeah. Um, uh, again, no, we can pivot anywhere and everywhere. Some um, are saying it's not, you know, it's not an either or. I mean, you could both have. Economically, good, yeah. we're not. We're not very big. No? Mm -hmm. um, uh, in Southeast Asia, if you look at our GDP per capita, we're mm -hmm. actually at the bottom half. Mm -hmm. no? we're, we're not a big country economically. Mm -hmm. And we need all the help that we can get no? from everyone who wants to help us, whether militarily, economically, um, or, or in trade. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't believe in you know, setting aside yeah. one, one country and going to the mm -hmm. other because we can actually coexist. No? Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, we're not, I don't think, for now at least, I don't think we want to be a superpower. All you want is to uplift the lives of mm -hmm. our constituents. That's mm -hmm. the most basic uh, direction of, uh, of, of, of any administration. So, mm -hmm. if you're like America or China jockeying for, for, for being a superpower, then that's a different story. But in, in our case, we just want to improve the lives of our constituents. How would you describe the crowd... Uh, Response to the president when he visited China. With with the OFWs, John, because um, the first meeting was with the OFW. Rock mm. star talaga siya, mm -hmm. no? And uh, well, I remember when he was talking. No, there's one thing that really struck me. Sabi niya, na kumain ng kotong sao, 
umay kumotong sa iyo. Away mo. No? Pagalitan mo, sampalin mo. Stand up for yourself. He, in fact, I remember he said the difference between the Filipinos and the Americans, the Americans are assertive. Mm-hmm. Pag inaapi sila, they fight back. Mm-hmm. Tayo pag inaapi tayo, we take it and we stay quiet. Mm-hmm. I think the 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 context there is we have to stand up. We have to be independent. Uh, we stand up for ourselves. We have to be independent. And we have to know when to fight back if necessary. I think he's drumming up the Filipino nationalism for a very long time, really. It, it's been dormant. No? Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, again, no? the administration is new. And I think his, 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 his agenda really is to drive up the Philippine nationalism. Coming out from individuals, no? mm-hmm. individual Filipinos, individual OFWs, he wants to bring out that that nationalism. And the second one, um, during the meeting with the chi- Chinese delegates, um, I have to admit, no, um, almost eighty percent of his speech was American bashing. Mm-hmm. No? I don't even know if that <laughs> if China <laughs> really <laughs> wants. No, if China <laughs> really wants to hear that, but. Uh, um, yun yung, yung second part no but uh definitely i i can see from from the chinese officials because mm-hmm. we met the top four that mm-hmm. they are they want to ano they want to re- revive the relationship mm-hmm. you know? um, the chinese were one of the earlier but probably the earliest trading partners of the philippines mm-hmm. and uh, they want to uh be productive no uh, in this region so uh and that's a good sign i think um uh, if we agree not to talk about the maritime issue for now mm-hmm. you know, and talk about trade and talk about you know, uplifting the lives of our uh, peoples, then, then that, that's uh, a very good you know, a very good strategy. We have a l- uh, large business delegation. Huge. No? 400 yata. 400. Should we read anything special into that? Um, I think a lot of, from, from what I saw, no, mm-hmm. uh, John, a lot of the uh, probably 95% of the business delegations were from Chinese ancestry. Mm-hmm. So I think there is some level of probably similarity in terms of doing business. No? Mm-hmm. I, alam naman natin here in our country, a lot of the Filipino Chinese are into business. And I think that is probably the similarity between China, mm-hmm. you know, ch- the Chinese in China and the Filipino Chinese here. That mm-hmm. you know, Let's be productive. Let's do business. Because mm-hmm. eventually... When both countries are doing business, that will tran- translate to growth and mm-hmm. translate to more jobs. Senator, I guess before we um, go to our commercial break, we can answer one of the questions from social media. This is a question from Dalia Analupa. Okay. Um, oh, I like think he... Yeah, our uh, teleprompter is yeah, playing hide and seek. <laughs> She's asking um, if there's a possibility that students with disability will be granted transportation assistance or other financial assistance for their studies. Well, de- definitely, there's a um, in, in there's a law now, no, to to give uh, special um, discounts uh, to PWDs. No? Um, with students in particular, um, I think as as if you are PWD and you have an ID, mm-hmm. you can get special privileges, special discounts, and also I know some establishments they also give you know on top of the what's mandated uh in the law they also give other privileges to our pwd so. okay um so uh we can go to a, a one minute break so to those tuning in this is in q a with senator win gachalian we'll be back after a minute
Thank you. We're back. Uh, welcome back to INQ and A. Tonight, our special guest is Senator Win Gatshalian. Um, Senator, you're into your what fourth month as a uh, senator, senator of the Republic. Uh, let's talk a little bit about why you decided to run for the Senate after mm-hmm. 15 years in uh, Congress and in, in local, uh, government. local government. Yes, um, my 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 career is largely in the local government. Mm-hmm. I've been a mayor for nine years, then congressman for six years. But I think I got much of my uh, public service experience in the local government. And mm-hmm. it's really, I, I think for public servants who wants to either go up mm-hmm. or do more things, the local government really is the best place to um, to learn and mm-hmm. the, best pla- the best place to uh to to grow yourself as a public servant um because as as a as a mayor you're like a little president eh? mm-hmm. you handle education you handle peace and order you handle health you handle engineering you handle <laughs> social services so mm-hmm. you're like a little president there mm-hmm. and uh you also make mistakes uh ang maganda lang because it's small you can recover from that mistake no? mm-hmm. and you you learn again that's why um one of the best selling points of our president right now is his 23 mm-hmm. years experience as a mayor, as a mayor. Mm-hmm. and not not an ordinary mayor no yeah. he demonstrated in Davao how he fixed um, the peace and order situation and eventually led to uh, development and growth I remember when I was still in the private sector John uh, we have a company in Davao and I was I was going there no mm-hmm. uh, a lot in fact I spent a few years in Davao uh, in the er- mid 90s mm-hmm. I see. and uh, I remember talking to one Davaoenyo <laughs> And I was telling them, I was asking them, ano ba yung economic agenda ni Mayor Duterte? Ano ba yung kanyang business platform? Sabi niya, kay Mayor Duterte, very simple lang. If there's peace and order, there's business. I think that's what mm-hmm. we are seeing mm-hmm. right now. No? Mm-hmm. To a certain extent, it's 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 a good formula because mm-hmm. the business man, as long as you don't, wag mo silang pakilaman, as long as you don't meddle with their business operation, mm-hmm. hindi mo sila kukotongan, hindi mo sila gagalawin, they will grow by mm-hmm. itself, eh. and as long as there's peace and order in the area, you know, they will grow by itself. You no, know? I think that what happened in Taiwan, where the all of the small and medium enterprises grew and became strong, I think that's now applying on a national scale. So, going back, um, it's really a, a good learning process for me being a mayor, mm-hmm. and I, I told myself now that I have enough experience, maybe I can translate this on a national scale. That mm-hmm. that made me decide to run for. Uh, a national position. So there are, well, aside from the president, of course, no. Uh, in the Senate, there there would be what, Dick Gordon, who the same. Dick Gordon, C. C. J. B. Hercito, Hercito. From from Congress, marami kami, no. Um, I see. There's Sunny Angara. There's mm-hmm. uh, Joel. That's right. There's mm-hmm. uh, Mig Zubiri. Uh, Riza, no, mm-hmm. my seatmate mm-hmm. is uh, Riza Hontemeras mm-hmm. is um, uh, from Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, see. Senator Sota was a vice mayor before. Mm, yeah. So, maganda yun. Eh, the Senate has now a very good mix no, of mm-hmm. uh, of uh, people coming from different disciplines. No? And that's mm-hmm. the beauty no? because you now can uh, come up with good legislation, good policy, looking at different angles. No? And, and I think that's the beauty of having a diverse bag of uh, talent. Mm-hmm. One more question before we talk about your pet initiatives. No? Um, when you decided to run for the Senate, you ran uh, with Grace Poe. Yes. Um, can you talk to us about the uh, decision making behind that? Um, in during that time, uh, my political party. Mm-hmm. No, there are two things that led me to mm-hmm. uh, to to support Senator Grace and mm-hmm. Senator Cheese. One was. It's an NPC position. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a member of the mm-hmm. Nationalist Pe- People's Coalition, and mm-hmm. it t- t- it was our party decision mm-hmm. to um, support the tandem of Center Cheese and Center Grace. And number two, my personal, because I believe that she's a fresh uh, face mm-hmm. to to uh, public servants, mm-hmm. and uh, she comes from a non-political background that mm-hmm. can bring really fresh ideas, mm-hmm. fresh uh, perspective in public service. And until now, I truly believe that mm-hmm. um, her non-political background really gives her the edge you know, to a lot of the politicians. You know. 
um, she's young. I, I really believe that mm -hmm. uh, she is a lot of she has a lot of room to grow, and maybe mm -hmm. you know, we don't know. Eh? We don't know what will uh, happen in the future. Maybe mm -hmm. she can still make a run for it. Mm -hmm. Senator, um, you're the chairman of one of the committees that you chair is Energy. Energy committee. Um, and lately, there has been talk about the revival of the BNPP mm -hmm. and um, considering nuclear power mm -hmm. for the Philippines. I saw that you released a statement about how you're supporting the president about mm -hmm. being cautious actually about that mm -hmm. um why should the yes. filipinos be cautious about nuclear energy actually even before the president made his decision i already issued a statement that uh, uh i'm against op reopening bnpp you know, the bataan nuclear power plant because number one it's uh, very old no? mm -hmm. number two it's also like lalibingan ng mga bayani it's very emotional mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, because it was built uh, during a very controversial yeah. time and mm -hmm. it's shrouded in controversy it became a very emotional issue to many many Filipinos no? so I think uh, I, 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 I mentioned earlier that uh, before na if you want to go into nuclear power let's do it right from the beginning this is not an ordinary power source this is a very volatile highly dangerous power source if you don't do it right so from the beginning we have to do it right but Having said that, no, um, the energy sector is a very dynamic sector. Um, it, it moves f very quickly, no, mm -hmm. and um, uh, nuclear power right now again is in fashion. No? In fact, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of European countries, China, mm -hmm. Southeast Asian countries are looking at nuclear power because of its mm -hmm. very unique feature. It's clean, no? and if we want to move into a carbon-free future, into a mm -hmm. um, greener future, we cannot avoid talking about nuclear power as part of our nuclear, uh, part of our energy mix. How about renewable energy? Is it something that your committee is yes. looking at? Um, the renewable energy is also a very uh, good source, and um, definitely it's clean. However, right now as at this point it's it's a very expensive proposition mm -hmm. um, solar for example is quite expensive and it's also uh, wi with solar you can only use solar during the day mm -hmm. you can you cannot use it at night mm -hmm. so that's a problem with solar but definitely the technology is evolving very fast uh, in fact uh, prices of solar is dropping in fact they, they're saying mm -hmm. in the next five or six years solar will be as cheap as the ordinary power source so again it's very dynamic we have to look at technologies we have to look at the evolution of of a lot of these technologies batteries now are becoming very viable mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh it's a very dynamic uh, uh, uh sector w what would you say is your uh main thrust as uh, energy uh, committee we chair? have three we have three uh directions we call three s no? mm -hmm. stability sustainability and sulit sulit mm -hmm. meaning uh, affordable, reasonable, yeah. affordable and reasonable price of electricity. Of mm -hmm. course, the third one, the Sulit, is the most appealing to, mm -hmm. to, consumers. to the consumers. No? Mm -hmm. And we're working on a few legislation that will uh, hopefully, no? hopefully cut down the price of electricity and cut down the electricity bill that we uh, vehemently pay no? every <laughs> every month Every month we get the, the bill. One of those is your bill, I think, the systems loss the charge. Systems yeah. Loss, yes, we we filed a bill to um, to uh, review the systems loss, and uh, because in our research in some other countries, they've already managed to pull mm -hmm. down the systems loss to almost. Uh, right now, we're paying about six point five percent on the average. Uh, in some countries, they're paying as low as three percent, so almost half. No. Uh, to many of the ordinary consumers, a reduction in half is is, yeah. is a lot already. Senator, let's say hi to uh, some of our uh, wow, Spain. viewers. Yeah, from, uh, yo, uh, hi Spain. to our uh, kababayan in Spain. Of course, vegan and in, in Locosur and uh, uh, Bacolod. Mayang gabi. Mm -hmm. uh, let's also ask um, this question from uh, Rafael Manalastas. How can you implement your bill to far-flung municipalities if there are no state colleges? I think this is the free higher education free higher bill, education. I think, yeah. Um, Maybe that's the right segue to yeah. education. So education. Mm. Education, yeah. education is, uh, is my primary advocacy. Mm -hmm. um, I really believe that uh, the 
future of this country is through quality education and accessible education for all. Um, just to answer the question, mm -hmm. um, definitely we have to look at areas of growth. No? Um, there's a lot of municipalities that are growing, a lot of cities uh, are growing very fast, and we need to put uh, state universities in those strategic areas. Mm -hmm. But we also have to look at the courses, no? because we cannot just put um, colleges and then not look at what the colleges, uh, what the community needs in that area. So one of the most important part is really to have a good synergy with the local community. That's what mm -hmm. we did in Valenzuela. Um, we made sure that our graduates can work in Valenzuela. Mm -hmm. And uh, like in Valenzuela, we are mainly a highly industrial industrialized city. We have a lot of factories. So um, about a few years ago, I think seven or eight years ago, we started offering engineering mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. courses. So all of our graduates can now work in Valenzuela. So this is also important, the synergy between the community and the um, in the uh, higher in the college uh, colleges. There's another question: Is your free ed higher education act for all, or just for uh, I guess yes. honor students, higher grades? Actually, in in our proposal, as long as you pass the entrance exam, you're eligible for mm -hmm. to, to this this free higher education because it's free. We're eliminating. H how will you fund that? Um, the funding we will need approximately uh, 15 billion pesos mm -hmm. to. Uh, completely abolish tuition fees in our stately state universities and colleges. As we speak, the government is already subsidizing close to eighty okay. percent of the cost per student. So we're only sub we're only taking away or subsidizing the, the remaining twenty percent, mm -hmm. and that twenty percent is approximately fifteen billion pesos. I see. What um what is the argument for that? Why do you think the Philippines needs this? This okay. kind of thing. Well, the Philippines need a lot of college graduates. Um, in our research, uh, if you compare uh, a person who just graduated high school and a person who graduated college, the person who graduated college will earn approximately 2.5 times a person who just graduated from high school. From high school. Mm -hmm. So, mas malaking kita niya. If, uh, of course, if you can earn more, then you have the capacity to help out your family. Uh, and and pull them out of poverty. But uh, they were, I think, the K to twelve is supposed to. They're thinking about that, mm -hmm. um, so that you don't need to go to higher. To get yes, what well, the K to twelve what, tech voc or yes, the K to twelve. What they embedded in the K to twelve is the tech voc, mm -hmm. um, tech voc uh, mm -hmm. uh, portion, mm -hmm. and the tech voc is is a good way of giving additional skills mm -hmm. to our to our students and so when they graduate they can look for simple jobs no or put up simple businesses but with college kasi it's a full development eh, of a person so and the full development will enable th that person to develop his or her critical thinking and move forward in other much more complicated courses or much more complicated employment that will enable him to earn much bigger. Senator, did you choose the, your committees, education and yes, uh, yes, energy? I chose those uh, committees, um, uh, energy because I believe that uh, an integral part of our growth and economy mm -hmm. should we should have uh, a, a good policy and a good platform on energy. Education really is from Valenzuela. When I was a mayor, we put mm -hmm. a lot of. Um, effort and concentration in education we mm -hmm. got good results at the end mm -hmm. of the day uh, what matters are the results and we got very good results we saw a lot of our actually all of our graduates are now employed mm -hmm. earning uh, decent wages that enable them to help out their families How, how's your working relationship with uh, education secretary Lilin Brion? okay naman, because I remember when I was a mayor I, I used to consult her mm -hmm. she's an economist mm -hmm. eh? And uh, one of the things that I consulted her is the in 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 in, in any LGU kasi, uh, uh, you reach a point where in your revenues are not growing. Mm -hmm. So I remember visiting her and I asked her, "Mom, how can I grow my revenues, pa? Because I need to grow my revenues for me to have the capacity to create more projects." Mm -hmm. no? And I remember consulting with her. So she's a intelligent person mm -hmm. she knows her stuff and she's very determined in fact during the hearing he really nailed the uh, problem on the head um, he said 
Sabi niya, look, we have a lot of money. We cannot spend it. This is what I'm gonna do. No? So, at mm. the end, the students will feel the uh, the uh, support of the government. Mm. Can, can we back up? What, what did she mean? We have a lot of money, but um, we cannot okay. spend it. Yeah, let's, let's back up a bit. No? Um, the problem of the past administration is spending the budget being allocated. In mm. fact, in DepEd, capacity. the capacity, yeah. the absorption Absorptive capacity. capacity. Mm. In DepEd, they only spent half of the budget that was given to them in 2016. Mm. Yeah. No? Mm. So the absorptive capacity of the uh, of of the government now is actually what is the problem, mm -hmm. and um, so when we were asking her mom, can you mm -hmm. spend? I think her budget is close to five hundred billion pesos. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, can you spend all of this? And uh, I was surprised, no, that he that her her she had a strategy, mm -hmm. and uh, even even though she's uh, new in her job, she had a strategy on how to. Mm -hmm. um, spend as fast and as wisely and as efficient as efficiently as possible and the more efficient the department spends their budget mm -hmm. the more our constituents will feel government senator there's a question here would there uh, from chris domon would there be a bill passed that will make college free and so this is the free, free higher, higher education, education. Yes. what is its status now i know the senate just started but and what do you think are the prospects the of prospects the bill after very the good. passing I, you remember John, no? uh, Christine, I remember when I filed the bill about two or three years ago in Congress, everyone was skeptical. Mm -hmm. Siyempre, ang unang pumasok was, can the government afford this? Yes. You know? And what's the effect to our uh, students, to our children? And uh, when I showed them that it's possible, and when I showed them that the budget of the government now is big enough to support this, ang problema nga natin, John, we cannot spend it. Eh. Mm -hmm. That's the, the problem now. And we have enough fiscal space. We have enough space to mm -hmm. to allocate 15 billion. In the Senate alone, we have about seven bills of the same mm -hmm. objective. You know? So, meaning a lot of people yeah. now are conscious and believe that this bill can actually work in our country. So, Senator, let me just backtrack. So, the uh, 15 billion that you're talking of is just for the 20 percent. Yes. So that means that the government is spending already something like 60 billion or so. Yes, uh, uh, about. About eighty billion. About, about eighty billion. Yes. So altogether, you're looking at a little under a hundred billion, and it will be free tuition. Yes, more or less. In all. In more state universities and colleges, including UP, including UP, including, including UP. UP. Although UP will be a, a probably a, a unique discussion. No? Yes. <laughs> um, UP is considered a national university. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be a a unique discussion, but. Mm -hmm. In, in theory, including UP, because so, it's a so state university. So, so actually, so the money is actually there. The money is there. The money is there. The money is there. Um, the returns are there. Meaning, if you invest in this, in in this in this child, in mm -hmm. the student, mm -hmm. um, in our computation, the government will be able to recover that investment in less than two years. The returns are very fast, eh? because the growth in his income his or her income is exponential no? about 2.5 times so no lose situation eh, with, with college education best case scenario senator so now it's already november mm -mm. Uh, when is the earliest that the uh tuition will completely be free um from the way we are going mm -hmm. and uh from the support that we are getting the, the most important is the support eh? mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, I think, if there will be no opposition uh, mm -hmm. from the administration itself, mm -hmm. and the administration will really find merit, mm -hmm. you know, in in this bill, I think by next school year, um, 2017, oh. we'll see mm -hmm. some good news. Wow, that's uh, that's good. Yeah, that's indeed good news. Yeah. Um, Senator, one of the questions on Facebook is about your case with the Sandigan Bayan. I believe it was recently dismissed. It was dismissed. Yeah. It was dismissed. So yeah. what happened with that, with the Lua case? Uh, well, now I can talk freely about it. Yeah, it was because dismissed. the um, case is over. Uh, I was, uh, the ombudsman filed a case against me because of 2,500 pesos. Mm. And uh, that was a case even before I became a public servant. Mm -hmm. So to make the long story short, uh, now we, you know, two thousand five hundred pesos for a for a case is quite ano talaga ridiculous, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, I really, uh, I really uh, um, I thank the uh, Sandigan Bayan to mm -hmm. to really 
to to acting act, acting on it f- as fast mm-hmm. and uh, to uh, to uh, give us justice. Mm-hmm. I think uh, at the end of the day, man, um, vindication is what matters. What, what lessons do you draw from that uh, <laughs> experience? It's a um, it's a good question, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, oh, I, I'm you're still processing. I'm <laughs> trying to dig inside, no, deep inside the the, the lessons learned. But definitely, mm-hmm. it's a very humbling experience. No? Mm-hmm. I, to be honest about it, John, I, I I come from the private sector, no, mm-hmm. and my motivation from joy to, to in joining public service is to really help out Valenzuela at mm-hmm. that time. No, mm-hmm. uh, I really want to change the way the way things are being run in our city hall mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, but the but politics is also very heavy you know, mm-hmm. in our in our country. Politics, siraan is also very heavy in our mm-hmm. in our country. And I think lesson learned here is if you want to go into public service, uh, we have to be ready you know, to face political firestorms, political attack. It's sad to say it's part of the public service uh, domain. Senator, in in a few minutes we'll well. Actually, we, we only have seven minutes to yeah. go, so in like a couple of minutes, we'll, we'll run a little game. Yes, uh, yes. Um, but is there anything else that, um, you know, so we, we always try to ask this question uh, of our guests, especially from the Senate and from the Cabinet. Um, media, we, we, we try to cover as best as we can all the news that's coming out, but we also want to know, is there something important that we are not paying as much attention to as we should be? Well, so in your case in the Senate, for instance, in 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 well, I can speak about what uh, sure, okay. I'm doing there. Um, one of the things that uh, we want to look at, maybe in the next few months, um, is why uh, our telecom service, our cell phone service, is so bad in our country, mm-hmm. and it became a, a political issue again. No, last mm-hmm. time everyone was complaining about mm-hmm. slow internet, mm-hmm. expensive internet, drop calls. And uh, after the election, parang nobody talked about it already. Mm-hmm. So I'm al- I also chair the Economic Affairs Committee, yes. and I really believe, no, um, that this slow mobile service, slow internet, is affecting our economy. In fact, the United Nations already declared that telecommunication is a human right, mm-hmm. and it's part of. Uh, uplifting the lives of our poor constituents. So the, the third utility, though. The third yeah. utility, yes. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that we want to look at maybe in the next few weeks and enlighten everyone is, bakit nga no mahal ang ang, ang internet sa atin? It's slow, and uh, how do we improve this no, in the future? The millennials will love this. No, every time we talk about mm-hmm. internet, the millennials clap their hands. But uh, it's really we have to settle it now no? uh, in order to. Um, grow our economy this things this telecom issue needs to be settled uh, we have another question from Facebook from Lotus Christines um, her question is sino pong mong batas ang nakatoka na gagawa ng batas para ipagbawal ang paputok magpapasko at magbabagong taon na naman tiyak maraming daliri at mukha ang mapuputokan <laughs> actually I think you have a uh, uh, bill on that nakakatawa no? every end of the year the Department of Health will literally plead and beg everyone mm. not to uh, use, fire use firecrackers or buy firecrackers. They will spend millions no, to advertise. Mm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think the basic action na lang is to ban no, the uh, retail uh, use of firecrackers. I, in, I filed a bill no, to completely ban the retail sale. No, yung mga maliliit. No, and just limit it to the more corporate, the big, mm. uh, for the example, aerial, the aerial yeah. uh, fireworks. Uh, fireworks. Yeah. I think um, uh, that should be that should be separated because mm. what really harms our constituents mm-hmm. are the retail sales. Eh. Yun mga pa isa isa. In fact, in in in, in our area uh, in Bulacan, no? uh, there was a recent accident. About twelve people died oh. no? mm-hmm. because of an explosion caused by the illegal manufacture mm-hmm. of uh, firecrackers mm-hmm. and uh, kawawa because a lot of them are just bystanders there no? and uh, um, I think it's about time really to uh, ban the retail sale of uh, firecrackers yeah this is what you call ending with a bang no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Senator we have about a little under four yeah. minutes left uh, let's play our uh, game time okay so to those tuning in we're still so it's a good bad and yeah. ugly no, sorry maybe 
my mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Good, so, bad, and maybe. maybe. Okay. So to those tuning in, you're still with I and Q and A with Senator Wynka Chalian. Maybe only one time. Yeah. Um, the name of the game is the good, the bad, and the maybe. Uh, we will uh, say an issue or a, an idea, and we will ask you to answer if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Mm-hmm. You can answer maybe, but you can only use it once. once. So okay. it's like your escape route. Okay. So you're ready? All right. Okay. Um, let's start. So number one is Senate to ratify Paris Agreement. Good. Internal aid during disasters. International. International. Uh, international. Sorry. Uh, good. Pacquiao Mayweather rematch. Good. <laughs> um, Donald Trump as President of the United States. Bad. Hillary Clinton as U.S. President. Good. Um, Cancelling the order of firearms from the U.S. Bad. Philippines purchasing assault rifles from Russia. Good. Um, he never San Miguel winning the PBA championship. Good. <laughs> <laughs> San Miguel fan. <laughs> The Lima filing writ of habeas data against Duterte. Bad. Bangsamora basic law. Bangsamora, maybe. Maybe. So, we still have two minutes. You can mm. explain any of your answers. Like, especially the maybe and maybe the bad. <laughs> well, uh, maybe with the guns. So, yeah. bad, bad idea to, to drop the... US. The yes, uh, but you're okay but with good idea Russia. to buy from the... Uh, w- again, no. This is a premise that uh, we should have relationships with everyone. Mm. You know, People um, anywhere. Um, Russia is known for manufacturing mm. really good uh, uh, assault, assault rifles. Assault rifles yeah. no? But I think I, I will digress a bit. No, I, after all of this hula baloo about uh, rifles and, and ammunition and, and firearms, I found out that the Philippines actually export. Our own rifles. Mm. Mm. We have a local We have a local manufacturer. And I saw the pictures. I mm. saw some comments. Ang ganda nila. No? Mm. Export quality. Of course, it's not mass mm. manufactured. No? It's specialty guns. But um, we can actually make no? um, our own uh, assault rifles and our own firearms. And this is actually maybe a blessing in disguise mm. for us to really develop this technology. It's no rocket science. Eh? It's, mm. a, it's purely mechanical. So maybe it's about time to look at this industry and put a lot of uh, investments in this industry. Senator, how about the Bangsamora basic law? You said maybe. Um, well, I am for peace. No? And uh, I'm for uh, stability in the Muslim Mindanao region. And maybe because that was actually the route before. No? And I truly believe it still can be the route, no? um, provided that we have to take out the contentious issues, mm-hmm. especially the non-constitutional issues. Mm. And I really believe it still can be the route to uh, stability and peace in that region. Okay. Senator, uh, ang bilis na oras. Ang bilis, yes. Yes. Just Just one hour. I don't know what hour na. Unfortunately, we have to say enjoy. goodbye. Tain, papalam na tayo. Yeah, so thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight um, on radio, on TV, and Facebook. Um, Who's next on the hot seat? You can follow us on social media to know at jnary underscore newsstand and at ksabilio inq. Um, thank you for for watching tonight. This has been I and Q and A with Senator Win Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank night, you guys. Thank you.